Dairy is important for the body's overall health, but could you be eating too much dairy? Unfortunately, the answer isn't black and white, even if you are a person who can tolerate dairy without issues. According to science, this is what happens when you eat too many dairy products. The right amount of dairy is three cups a day, right? That is, after all, what the USDA advises. Yet this answer isn't so cut and dry. If you are at all lactose intolerant, you may find three cups to be way, way too much. It all depends on how much lactase, the enzyme that breaks down lactose, your body produces. Yuri Saito Loftus, an assistant professor at the Mayo Clinic, told WebMD, that does vary a little bit from individual to individual. We don't know 100% what controls that. Presumably, it's genetically determined. For most people, determining an ideal amount of dairy products calls for trial and error, as there's no strict guidelines that determine how an individual is going to react to dairy. But don't worry, it might not be a big deal if you don't hit that magic number, especially if you have a mixed diet and get your calcium from other sources. Consuming too much dairy can lead to an unpleasant experience for you and the ones around you, Karen Ansel, registered dietitian nutritionist, explained to Self. Even though dairy is one of the healthiest foods you can eat, it can definitely cause gas and bloating for some people. In most cases, this gas and bloating stems from lactose intolerance, which affects 65% of the world's population. If you feel uncomfortable after drinking a tall glass of milk, you should know that many people can handle smaller servings, two to four ounces at a time, without side effects. You may also find that yogurt and hard cheeses are easier on your stomach. Still, if you find yourself clutching your belly 30 minutes to a couple hours after eating too much dairy, lactose intolerance is likely the culprit. While you may be fine with one glass of milk, that second glass may have put you over your limit. Although it's not advised to eat more dairy than is comfortable, cutting out dairy entirely is not always best either. Ansel says, in fact, totally scrapping dairy from your diet can make lactose intolerance worse because your body produces digestive enzymes to break down the foods that they are used to digesting on a regular basis. In other words, when you stop consuming dairy products, your body will produce less lactase, which will make the next time you inevitably have ice cream or a glass of milk much harder on your body than before. Impossible. No citizen can look cool while sitting on the toilet. This changes everything. You may not consume too many glasses of milk, but what about cheese? Although cheese still has some of the benefits of other dairy products, consuming too much of it is hard on the body. The saturated fat in cheese prohibits the absorption of necessary fatty acids, nutritional therapist Terry Faircloth told Yahoo Lifestyle. He says that problems really begin because the saturated fat in cheese can keep your body from absorbing essential fatty acids. He explains, essential fatty acids have many essential jobs. They are also anti-inflammatory, so eating too much cheese may increase inflammation throughout the body making existing inflammatory conditions such as arthritis worse. Cheese isn't the sole problem, though. Dairy products as a whole can cause severe irritation in the cells of your gut. When that happens, allergens can enter the bloodstream and cause an inflammatory response. If you have an inflammatory disease, you may find that even a small dash of milk in your morning cereal is too much. Just as eating too much cheese increases inflammation, the saturated fat in cheese also increases cholesterol. Faircloth explained, If you are one of those people who is susceptible to the effects of cholesterol, cheese is going to make matters worse and may, in fact, put you at risk for a more serious medical condition such as a stroke. In addition to raising your cholesterol and increasing inflammation, the dairy product we all love can affect our health in another way. Faircloth added, Eating too much cheese with its high saturated fat and salt content can contribute to high blood pressure. High blood pressure or hypertension has been dubbed a silent killer because most people don't experience any symptoms. Although you may not feel any different with hypertension, it is dangerous to leave untreated as it can lead to strokes, heart attacks, blood clots, and other life-threatening complications. Cutting back on cheese may just help to reduce your risks. After consuming too much dairy, you may notice pimples cropping up on your face. As the American Academy of Dermatology reported, several studies have found a possible correlation between dairy products and acne. Whitney P. Bow, board-certified dermatologist and clinical assistant professor of dermatology at State University of New York Downstate College of Medicine in Brooklyn, New York, told the AAD, While more clinical research is needed to determine dairy's impact on acne severity, 
I advise patients to talk with their dermatologist if they believe certain dairy products aggravate their acne. Given the benefits of calcium and vitamin D, patients who choose to limit or avoid dairy products should supplement their diet with appropriate levels of calcium and vitamin D. Even if you think the addition of more dairy to your diet is entirely to blame for your breakout, Bo recommends keeping a food diary and following up with your dermatologist before jumping to any conclusions. According to the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, milk and dairy products are ultimately responsible for a lot of the artery-clogging fats that make their way into the diet of many Americans. Cheese in particular is pretty dangerous, and not just because it's so delicious that we tend to eat a lot of it. There's a ton of fat in cheese. In fact, most is around 70% fat. However, another study has shown that full-fat dairy products are not exactly at fault for causing heart disease. That said, dairy wasn't found to decrease one's risk either. Instead, replacing dairy fat with vegetable fat reduced the risk of cardiovascular disease by 10%, and replacing dairy fat with polyunsaturated fat reduced the risk by some 24%. The takeaway? Frank Hu, senior author of the study, revealed, These results suggest that dairy fat is not an optimal type of fat in our diets. Although one can enjoy moderate amounts of full-fat dairy such as cheese, a healthy diet pattern tends to be plant-based and low in saturated fat. Consuming three glasses of milk a day, the recommended daily intake for young girls and women, may not lead to heart disease, but too much dairy still seems to negatively impact one's long-term health. In 2014, researchers conducted a comprehensive study of more than 60,000 women and discovered that those who drank three glasses of milk or more had a 44% increased risk of cancer compared to women who consumed less than one glass daily. Mary Schooling, a professor at the City University of New York School of Public Health, said people shouldn't necessarily change their diet based on the study because more research is needed before an association, not just a link, is discovered. Nevertheless, Carl Mikkelsen, the study's lead author and a professor in the Department of Surgical Sciences at Uppsala University in Sweden, told CBS News, The study findings have, for myself, been strong enough to cut down on my milk consumption. In quite the one-two punch, consuming too much dairy has not just been linked to a higher risk of cancer, but also a lower breast cancer survival rate. A 2013 study revealed that a, quote, intake of high-fat dairy but not low-fat dairy was related to a higher risk of mortality after breast cancer diagnosis. The women in the study who reported eating one or more servings of high-fat dairy products each day had a 49% higher risk of mortality after being diagnosed with breast cancer, compared to women who either ate fewer servings of high-fat dairy or those who ate exclusively low-fat dairy products. According to the study, non-fat dairy products or plant-based milks may be, quote, a reasonable approach for limiting risk of adverse outcomes when it comes to breast cancer. Milk is the best thing for strong bones, right? That's what you've likely been told for a long time. You're a growing boy. A growing boy. However, that may be the furthest thing from the truth. According to one Swedish study conducted in 2014, drinking too much milk increased, not decreased, a woman's risk of broken bones. The risk of bone fractures increased 16% in women who consumed three or more glasses of milk each day, while the risk of a broken hip increased a whopping 60%. It is true that calcium strengthens bones, but dairy products don't have to and shouldn't be your only source of calcium. According to Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health's The Nutrition Source, dark leafy green vegetables and legumes are important sources of calcium. There's also more to strengthening bones than just consuming this mineral. It's also a matter of regular exercise to help build and maintain bone density and strength. Another reason not to skip your daily yoga routine. Although it may sound hard to believe, excessive milk consumption has even been linked to death. According to one comprehensive study, both men and women who drank more than three glasses of milk each day had an overall higher risk of death, and by a lot. Compared to the women who had less than one glass of milk each day, women who reported consuming more than three glasses of milk daily nearly doubled their risk of death. Switch out your three glasses of milk for three servings of yogurt, though, and those risks do not remain. Science Daily reported that a 2018 study confirmed, with the exception of milk, dairy products have been found to protect against both total mortality and mortality from cerebrovascular causes. Could your dairy products be to blame for your headaches? According to one study, researchers found what they called to be a significant relationship between dairy products and headaches. And it's not just milk. 
Foods with tyramine have also been found to trigger migraines. David Buckholtz, a neurologist at Johns Hopkins University, explained to NPR, Unfortunately for cheese lovers, aged cheeses contain the most of this headache-activating chemical. Buckholtz explained, At the young end, there are cheeses such as cottage or American cheese or cream cheese, which don't have much tyramine, as opposed to the other end of the spectrum, there's blue cheese or cheddar, which are loaded with tyramine. Simply eliminating the cheese from your diet may not be enough to cure your migraines, though. There might be more things that trigger a migraine for you, but still, reducing your consumption of tyramine-rich cheeses could be a great place to start. Consuming three servings or more of low-fat dairy may lead to a greater risk of developing Parkinson's disease, one 2017 study revealed. According to the data, those who consumed too much low-fat dairy were at a 34% greater risk. Drinking more than one serving of skim or low-fat milk per day was also associated with a higher risk, 39%, of developing Parkinson's disease when compared to drinking less than one serving per week. Additionally, both sherbet and frozen yogurt were found to increase a person's risk. Catherine C. Hughes of the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health in Boston, Massachusetts, told the American Academy of Neurology, Our study is the largest analysis of dairy and Parkinson's to date. The results provide evidence of a modest increased risk of Parkinson's with greater consumption of low-fat dairy products. Such dairy products, which are widely consumed, could potentially be a modifiable risk factor for the disease. Of course, this isn't to say that eating too much dairy, specifically low-fat dairy, causes Parkinson's disease, just that there seems to be a strong link. Still, with all the evidence suggesting there can be too much of a good thing when it comes to dairy, you might just want to cut back. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite foods are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.